welcome guys uh, this is first lecture from just biology so in this series of lecture we will be discussing about a dna isolation and its purification so this is very important technique in life science and um, so i would say this is most prominent one because every information in human or animal is coded in the dna so if you if you want to analyze or if you want to study anything about the characteristics of organisms so that can be studied by use of dna so that's why dna is very important especially this scenario so before getting the topic so we should know the basics of the dna basic structure or uh, characteristics and their components as well so we'll be see each and everything in detail and uh, before start in the lecture i'll give the introduction to the dna then we can start the uh, isolation and its purification steps so let's begin so dna so what is dna actually so dna is acts as a carrier molecule so which st stands for deoxyribonucleic acid deoxyribonucleic acids so uh, many of us will have a doubt on the acid so what do you mean by acid a deoxyribonucleic acid why we can call it as acid and is there any acidic structure in it or um, is there any acidic group or something but the answer is yes why we call it as acid so there is a answer is there is an answer in the dna structure itself so what are all the components of dna is present what are all the components you can see when you analyze the dna so we have the three components so what are those components the first component the first component is the base so the base and the second component is phosphate phosphate and of course third component is sugar sugar so if you look at the sugar so we have two types of nucleic acid so one is rna and other one is a dna so if you look at the dna structure you can see a deoxy form of sugar but while other the rna if you see the rna you can see oxygenated ribose so that is ribo so in in case of dna you can see deoxy form and in case of rna you can see oxy form so that is difference between rna and dna and also the function also may vary uh, with species to species i'll discuss later so let's uh, let's start with the base so what is base so base is nothing but a nitrogenous components which is added to the dna so then only we can call it as nucleotide so nucleotide so there are two types of bases there are two types of base so one is called as pyrimidine and second one is called as purines so both the uh, bases are differ only basis of the structure only basis of the structure if you look at the uh, pyrimidines you can see thymine and guanine thymine and guanine you can see in pyrimidine structure then uh, thymine actually this thymine and guanine is made up of six membered ring along with uh, some other compounds so i'll tell you later so if you look at the purines so that constitute adenine and uh, cytosine so adenine and cytosine so adenine and cytosine so these are all the two types of bases which is oftenly present in the dna then look at the phosphate molecule so this phosphate molecule this phosphate molecule you can see in a po4 minus po4 minus that often is seen like 
phosphate form. So the actually the negative charge of DNA which is given by the phosphate only because the phosphate carries negative charge. This phosphate carry negative charge. That's why the DNA possesses DNA bears the negative charge. So this is negative charge. So this is regarding the phosphate molecule. Then sugar. Then sugar. The third component which is important components of the DNA is sugar. So this sugar is uh, if you look at the structure of sugar you can see a 5 carbon ring. 5 carbon ring is called as pendo sugar. It's called as pendo sugar. Pendo sugar. It's called as pendo sugar. So this pendo sugar is uh, is is connected with both the uh, both the components like phosphate and the nitrogen bases. Then if you look at the nucleotide structure, if you look at the nucleotide structure of a DNA, I'll show I'll show you. One second, I'll show you better. I'll erase here. So I'll show. So this is sugar, sugar molecule. Uh, this is the first carbon is connected with <coughs> nitrogen bases and the fifth carbon is connected with phosphate. So this is a structure of nucleotide. This is a structure of nucleotide. Nucleotide. This is oftenly the structure of nucleotide. Then these nucleotide will be joined each other to form polynucleotide. So this is called polynucleotide. One nucleotide is combined with other nucleotide, then they form polynucleotide. So this you can see the continuous uh, joining of this nucleotide throughout the DNA. So then we can call it as polynucleotide. So the DNA is often called it as like polynucleotide DNA deoxyribose polynucleotides. So we can say that deoxyribose nucleic acid. Then, apart from this structure, so we can uh, we can uh, we can discuss about the isolation and their purification. Just introduction, just introduction. So I'll, I'll start with the introduction. Then uh, upcoming lectures will be discussing the entire process and their uh, isolation technique of DNA isolation. So. So as we all know the DNA, so DNA that is present inside the cells of course, uh, DNA is present inside the cells. So we, as we all know, so this red that represents the DNA, the red that is represent the DNA. Then if we want to isolate the DNA from the cell, what we need to do the first, the first and foremost thing is. We need to break the cells. For example, uh, this is cell. So, if you want to get the uh, content from inside the this pen, we need to break the pen. So, like that, if you want to get the DNA from the cell, you need to break it off. You need to break it off. Then only you will get the content. So, that is uh, DNA. So, the content that means also you can uh, expect RNA protein as well. So everything, everything which is abide inside the nucleus also you can uh, expect. So we need only the DNA. So there are certain procedure to remove all those contaminants. Then we can uh, take DNA alone. So that also we will discuss in upcoming lectures. So let's come to this uh, cell structure. So for example, we have different samples like plant, animal and bacteria. So we have many many types of sample. So out of which, uh, let's say, plants, animals, and bacteria. Plants, animals, and bacteria. So in out of these three, the animal, 
the animal dna is quite easy so get the dna from the animal cell is quite easy because they lack cell membrane so but in case of plant cell and bacteria cell they have both cell wall and cell membrane they have both cell wall and cell membrane so what we can conclude from this one is the plant and this bacteria would take more time and more technique to get the dna welcome back to the animal cells so you got it so actually this plant and the bacteria is quite difficult when compared to the animal but the complexity is more in animals when compared to plants and bacteria so you got the difference between the complexity and um, the cell structure so i hope so then so for breaking the cell membrane for example uh, this is cell wall so this is cell membrane cell wall so this can be a cell wall and uh, so this may be a cell membrane cell membrane so first of all we need to first of all we need to break the cell wall so that is a difficult task for us so in case of bacteria so what we can do is we can use some kind of chemical or some kind of enzyme for the breaking of the cell wall for the breaking of the cell wall of the bacteria so what kind of chemical you can use the chemical is the chemical is not preferred much because that harms to the cell also and also the dna our ultimate idea is get the dna in pure form but if you are using like chemicals uh, that may denature that may alter the chem the integrity or some uh, stability of the dna so that leads to the total uh, contamination of in some protein or rna with that then you can use enzymes so this is preferred much enzymes so what kind of enzyme we can use what kind of enzyme we can use is that so there are a specific enzyme which is target which is target to the cell wall so it should target only to the cell wall but it should not harm other structure of the bacteria so one such enzyme so we can say that lysozyme lysozyme so lysozyme is a complex enzyme which can degrade the cell wall of the bacteria which can degrade the back um, cell wall of the bacteria so that means so the cell wall of the bacteria is you can expect a peptidoglycan and some specialized structure is called n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucose so the enzyme lysozyme what it does is so it will break the nam and nag layer of the cell wall so that leads to the uh, loss of integrity of the cell wall so we can easily pierce the uh, pierce with chemical or the enzyme to break the cell membrane so to break the cell membrane so if we break the cell membrane too if we break the cell membrane too so we can easily touch the nucleus so we can easily touch the nucleus as well so if we break the nucleus also if we break the nucleus also you will get the entire content from the nucleus so that means the dna extract will be uh, obtained so dna extract will be obtained so from that you can purify from that you can purify so how you can purify from the total mixture of the uh, these kind of stuffs is so simply we can go for a simple technique is called a centrifugation so we can go for a centrifugation so we can go for a centrifugation sorry centrifugation so centrifugation is nothing but the process by which we can separate both solid as well as the liquid part of the uh, solution solid and liquid part of the solution we can separate by using centrifugation so there is a machine different variation in uh, centrifuge as well 
so normally we can use laboratory centrifuge for the uh, separation of these kind of uh, solution so normally we will use 8000 to 10000 rpm so what is rpm rpm is nothing but rotation per minute so that is the spinning speed of the centrifuge will be calculated as rpm you know in some cases some protocol you can see uh, gravity also so either gravity or rpm so both are applicable so there is a conversion formula uh, for uh, rpm to gravity or gravity to rpm so that we will discuss later so so this is a overall view of the dna isolation and its purification so the so in this video we will cover the introduction the introduction of the dna isolation and the purification so then the uh, actual protocol and the procedure will be discussed in a future video okay if you like the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and uh, click the bell icon for later latest updates and thank you for watching guys